episode 18, The Showdown. As Willy Fogg attempts to travel around the world in 80 days, his progress is the current topic of discussion at London's Reform Club. I hope he's reached San Francisco on schedule. There are only 19 days left before time runs out. But are you sure the information hmm? is correct, Mr. Farrell? Absolutely, Mr. Weston. Mr. Fogg's ship caught fire on the high seas and was forced to dock at Mazatlan in Mexico. It sounds as though he might be delayed quite a long time. <laughs> Mm. Mr. Sullivan, my informants tell me that the damaged chip will take at least a week to repair. Mm, I believe Mr. Fogg is going to owe each of us quite a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fogg will find some way to get to San Francisco on time. I know he will. Ralph would be delighted to know that even now, Willie Fogg and his friends are approaching the coast of California. Can you see anything, Mr. Fogg? Oh, I hope we are on course. <laughs> I think I don't know what I We'll be there soon, Tico. Don't worry. Monsieur Fogg, have you any idea when we are going to arrive in San Francisco? According to my calculations, Brigadon, we should be passing over the mountains just south of San Francisco, near the town of Monterey. Oh. But this cloud cover is too thick to see any land. You are right, Monsieur. With no landmarks, it is impossible to know where we are. Oh, no! Also in the party are Inspector Dix and Constable Bully of Scotland Yard. Oh, do you think we'll get there soon, Inspector? I'm so cold and we haven't eaten in a long time. I'm no more uncomfortable than I am. Do I complain? Of course not. Now calm down and get hold of yourself. <laughs> oh, quick, Inspector, pull me in. I promise not to complain anymore. Oh, bully. The presence of the two Scotland Yard detectives is due to their having been assigned to follow Mr. Fogg, who is suspected of having robbed the Bank of England the day before his departure from London. We seem to be losing altitude. I believe the time has come to use the last of the fuel, Rigadon. Oui, monsieur. Oh, 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 no, no. Oh, Monsieur Fogg, is it the killer we are using as fuel is all gone, I'm afraid. My word. Oh, no, without the fuel, how are we ever going to make it to San Francisco?
the weight of its burden being considerably diminished, the balloon sails on without further incident. That is, until the local citizenry becomes aware of the strange object floating above them. Hey, well, I'll be switched. Yeah. What in tarnation is that thing? It's a balloon. What? Part of your balloon. Ah, uh, gum, now I've seen everything. Oh, oh. hey, feel like a little target practice? Ah, <laughs> so why not? <laughs> We're going down very quick. I'll do what I can to make our landing a smooth one, but you'd better hold on for something. Don't worry, Princess. I'll protect you. Just hang on to me real tight and you'll be fine. Folks, my name is Johnson. I'm the sheriff around here. Mind telling me who you are and where you come from? Willie Fogg is my name. I'm a British subject traveling around the world. You came all the way from England? Correct, Sheriff. My friends and I were aboard the Yokohama steamer, which was forced to stop for repairs. Hmm. As I couldn't afford to be delayed, I found my own means of transport to San Francisco. And may I say what a pleasure it is to be here. Well, he's an Englishman, all right. They all use that highfalutin lingo, and even a Texan couldn't make up a story like that. Even if it does talk kind of funny, it takes plenty of guts to try to go around the world. Only thing left to say is, welcome to San Francisco, Mr. Fogg. <laughs> Another newcomer has arrived. The wicked and conniving transfer. I have my own sort of welcome prepared for Mr. Fogg. <laughs> yeah! Out of my way! Meanwhile, Inspector Dix and Constable Bully have also arrived and are familiarizing themselves with the California coastline. <laughs> Ugh, it's better on that I feel like I'm asleep for a week. Yeah, on your feet, Constable. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but my insides want to be outside, sir. Fogg could be making his getaway at this very moment, Bully. Now hurry up and get on your feet. Hurry! Oh, right, sir. Meanwhile, the gentleman in question has satisfactorily concluded his business at the British Consulate. <laughs> now that our money has been changed into dollars and our passports have been stamped, I can finally believe that we have arrived in America. And even better, we got rid of those two guys from Scotland Yard. Right. Are all cities in America like this one, monsieur? It looks like a child built it. It doesn't begin to compare with the cities of Europe like London and Paris. Not yet, no. But it's less than 50 years old. London and Paris were even more primitive at that stage. I understand. Well, another new place to see. America, America, la tierra sin fin. America, America, ya estamos aquí. Allí donde son las fe, donde los sueños no se da, todo es por ti en América. América, América, gigante país. America, America, ya estamos aquí. Donde la gente vive, de costa a costa, en pie de cruz, todo es posible en América. Hey, Rigadon. Yes, Tico, what do you want? Lunch. <laughs> Aha, just as I'm a think, at 12 o'clock, it's lunch time. Uh, princess, I've got a little favor to ask of you. Yes? Tell those guys are you hungry. They couldn't possibly refuse a beautiful lady like you, Princess. That corn looks pretty good. Tico, stop it. Mind your manners. <laughs> we could all use a bite to eat. Let's find a good hotel and have some lunch. Oh, boy, our first good meal in two days. I'm gonna feel better already. <laughs> You said you wanted to find a good hotel. I don't think this is it. I'm afraid we don't have much choice in the matter. You mean this is the only hotel in town? Tico, stop complaining. You don't know what it's like inside, now do you? I can guess. <laughs> There's 
piles of food around here somewhere. This snores and never tells a lie. We'd best find out when our train leaves for New York. Good morning. Would you be kind enough to tell us the departure time of the next Central Pacific train bound for New York? Say, you must be the fellow that arrived on that balloon this morning. Take it from me. <laughs> Folks around here think what you're doing is mighty fine. I can't tell you how pleased I am. Now, about the train to New York. Well, sir, you've got to take the ferry across the bay to Oakland. The train leaves there every evening at 6 o'clock. Perfect. My friends and I will take your finest room and rest for a while. That's right. Huh? The fence is the hotel. Coming right up. Here we are. Now, if you'd like to buy a gun or two, I've got a pretty good selection. A firearm? But whatever for, sir. What for? What? He always was quicker than me. There's your answer, mister. The West is still a pretty ornery place. The man's got to be able to defend himself or he won't last long at all. There you go. Make your good price on any of them. Huh? Isn't a hotel an odd place to be selling firearms? Well, see, it's like this. The owners of these guns got shot before they could pay their bills. Gotta get my money back somehow, don't I? Now, they're all in fine condition, of course, but these two are as good as any you'll find. A matched pair, cleaned and oiled by myself. Do you think that we should buy them? Hmm? No, I think we shall get along quite well without them, Rigadon. Now, if you'll show us to our room, sir. Ain't hard to find. Just go up those stairs and down the hallway. It's the last door on your left. Thank you. <coughs> That's it. <laughs> After you, princess. Mm. Eh. This'll never do. The princess, she deserves... It's fine. Mm -hmm. If this is the finest room in the hotel, I wonder what the others are like. Looks like I was right as usual. It's a tough job being right all the time, but I guess somebody's got to do it. Oh, Kiko. Eddie, get on. It's been so long since I sleep on a real bed. I'm thinking maybe I forget the how. And maybe you'd better sleep on the floor then, eh? Are you crazy, Eddie, get on. <laughs> now, as it stands, we've gained two days crossing the Pacific from Yokohama. We lost an equal amount of time due to being delayed in Mexico and traveling by balloon to San Francisco. What a pity the ship broke. Oh. It would have been nice to have those extra two days as a margin of safety, but if all goes well, we shan't need them. You are precisely on schedule, are you not, Mr. Fogg? Correct. According to our schedule, we should arrive in London in 18 days. Stop, stop! You're wrong. We're behind the schedule. We should have had lunch a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you have a point, Tico. Let's continue our discussion in the dining room, shall we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, get on. Now you stay here. <laughs> Americans. They have no manners at all. You must remember, Rigadon, that in the West, men outnumber women by 20 to 1. It's their way of giving you a compliment, I suppose. Don't worry, Mr. Fogg. It doesn't bother me a bit. What can I get for you, folks? We're unfamiliar with your menu. What would you recommend? I'd say the buffalo steak. That's fine. Right. All right. Be right back with your soup. I'll eat anything. <clears throat> can I speak to you a moment, sir? Mm hmm? Folks? Got some real fine gold dust here. Gold dust? Yes, sir. Been prospecting for 20 years, two decades. Got plenty of gold, but I'm a little short of cash. <laughs> Don't blame any attention. That old man's crazier than a coyote on local weed. If that's gold, I'm Santa Claus. What are you talking about? Hey. This is a purest gold in California. Yeah. Oh. Just take a look, see for yourself, Mister Sailor. Didn't I tell you? Mm -hmm. Oh. Hmm. It's obviously high-grade gold. Unfortunately, I'm about to embark on a long journey, and it would be unwise for me to take it. Mm. Thanks. I'm not in the habit of taking money from strangers, but I am a little short of cash. Thanks, mister. I'm beholden to you. <laughs> a pleasure, I assure you. And the best of luck to you, sir. Thanks again, mister. Hey, you're prospecting yourself another couple of bricks, no, old man. <laughs> what a pity. That poor old man has been searching for gold for so many years now that he actually believes that the sand in that bag is gold. Aha! 
Ah, this is Willie Fogg's balloon. Oh, I know he's around here somewhere, and we're going to look until we find him. Let's <laughs> 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 wash his tail dust out our mouth. Hey, me, Dingo. He said this here Englishman's got a real pretty lady traveling with him. <laughs> well, where is she? Yonder. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, now, Waco is right. You're the prettiest gal I've seen in a month of Sundays. How about them? Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Come on, beautiful name. Release her at once. Hey, nobody gives me orders, Greenhorn. Watch this. Oh. They call me the Dingo Kid, the fastest in the West. Want to challenge me? You just say the word, Greenhorn. Young man, you're an animal. Huh? Oh. <laughs> you're right. Don't look like you're saying much, Dingo. That's what I know, White. You ain't saying nothing because you're a yellow bellied coward, cares more about his own skin than the lady. I can Let go. So <laughs> we'll fight. You've insulted the honor of a lady I am bound to defend. Oh, but, but, Mr. Fogg! Well, what do you know? A real hero. You better strap on a gun. That won't be necessary. I have my cane. I don't own a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to tell me you're going to go against my gun with that, mister? You're crazy. I do appreciate your concern, Mr. Dingo, but I will do my best not to hurt you. You ain't got a chance. Let's go. Who's going to pay for the damages? Keep your mouth shut and don't interfere. Oh, sir. Sorry, sir. Hey. <laughs> What's going on in space? Quiet, boy. Careful, Mr. Fogg. <laughs> Waco, you give the signal by firing your gun. That'd be the last sound you ever hear, mister. Like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I have ever met, and you have insulted my master, which means you have insulted me. <laughs> hmm. I... Monsieur, defend yourself. You're gonna be sorry you was ever born. <laughs> Is that so? Well, stand back, Rigdon. I'll handle this. Huh? Inspector Dix. Sir, you need to be taught a lesson. Teach me. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, I think my hand's broken. Can't stay out of trouble, can you, Dingo? Oh, I told you never to come back here. Uh, now you're gonna be here a little bit longer than you expected, cooling your heels in the city jail. Now get moving. I'm going, I'm going. That bank job. Oh, I wonder how long I'll be in. Uh, rest of you men, get out of town and stay out. This is foiled again, but Fog won't be so fortunate the next time. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was a very brave thing to do, Inspector. Indeed. You are a gallant gentleman, sir. I can't help wondering why you did it, Inspector Dix. Would you tell me? Sir, if it weren't for you, Bully and I would still be stranded in Mexico, and stepping into the fray seemed the least I could do in repayment for your help. Thank you, Inspector. <laughs> 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 hey, Marky, give me another Excuse me, monsieur. I would like to buy the guns you showed us before. What? You mean all of them? Yes. Rigodon mentioned that you two were on your way to London. So, with your permission, sir, Bully and I would like to join you. <laughs> good. A pleasure to have your company. Jolly good. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Five o'clock. We have a ferry to catch. Rigodon should have been back by now. <laughs> hmm. uh, please don't shoot. <laughs> would you kindly explain what's going on here, Rigodon? There is no need to be afraid. When I was in the circus, I was taught how to handle firearms by an expert. Fine, but why did you get them? 
We are about to cross this country. Outlaws and hostile Indians are everywhere. If the dragon is in... Bam! Raging blizzards, impossible herds of buffalo, and most dangerous of all, hostile tribes of Indians on the warpath. In our next episode, Willie Fogg and his friends discover that the insidious transfer is still determined to prevent them from completing their journey in time. He will endanger the lives of everyone aboard the train by sabotaging a bridge over which the train must cross. A bridge spanning a rocky gorge hundreds of feet high. Be sure to join us for Moment of Truth, the next episode of our thrilling journey around the world with Willie Fogg.